Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, Volocopter resumes certification process with a new owner. H-55's B-23 Energic logs 50 flights at Palo Alto. And Ukraine digs Iranian tech out of Russian assault debris. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight. From electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Volocopter resumes certification process with a new owner. Volocopter has resumed work toward the certification of its Velocity eVTOL, this time under the guiding hand of Diamond Aircraft. The manufacturer filed for insolvency late last year before being saved in an $11 million deal this March. Volocopter had big plans. High-profile airshow appearances, flashy partnerships with Honeywell and Mercedes-Benz, and a demo flight debut planned for the 2024 Paris Olympics. However, after EASA failed to certify its engine in time for flight testing, investor interest dried up. This forced the company into insolvency in late 2024. At that point, Velocity had reportedly completed around three-quarters of EASA's certification requirements. The saving grace came from China-based Wanfeng Auto Holding Group, which owns Austria OEM Diamond Aircraft. Wanfeng scooped up Volocopter's assets, which were originally valued at 42 million euros for just 10 million euro, roughly 11 million USD. Despite the change in ownership, Volocopter kept its name and Diamond began using its certification experience to help get Velocity across the regulatory finish line. Volocopter's two-seat Velocity, equipped with 18 rotors and nine batteries, has already racked up more than 2,000 test flights in its various iterations. Though its high-visibility campaigns have taken a back seat, the company says it's focused on completing certification and preparing for production and delivery. After the break, the integration of air taxis may be closer than we thought. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next Gen Minute. The integration of air taxis may be closer than we thought. The FAA has completed a remarkably realistic simulation that demonstrates how eVTOL aircraft would fit into the daily flows of one of America's busiest airports. This shows just how ready the U.S. is to tackle the complexities of air taxis if the market is ready for it. The trial, conducted at the agency's New Jersey-based airport facilities Terminal Integration Laboratory, used realistic 3D models, full-scale tower mock-ups, and connected aircraft and radar simulators to assess real-world viability at LAX. Ag Eagle sells 100th drone to South Korea. Ag Eagle Aerial Systems announced the sale of two more EBX drones to South Korea, bringing the country's total installed base to more than 100 units. This sale strengthens Ag Eagle's strategic partnership with the country and reaffirms its position in the Asia Pacific drone market. The Asia Pacific consumer drone market is projected to grow at 15% through 2030 and reach $4.1 billion in value, according to Grandview Research. Ag Eagle intends to grow in response to this projected demand for innovative and mission driven solutions. VAI cheers committee approval of Bedford for FAA. Vertical Aviation International applauded the 15 to 13 vote to approve Brian Bedford's nomination to become the next administrator of the FAA, and now urges the full Senate to rapidly confirm the nomination to provide the agency the stable, permanent leadership needed during the current period of rapidly evolving tech and modernization of the agency it critically needs now. 
with the FAA moving forward with long overdue reforms and upgrades of technology and equipment, as well as integrating drones and other new players in low-altitude airspace, strong leadership with Senate approval is essential. Ara Aero cleans up at Paris Air Show. Ara Aero made several announcements regarding its progress at the Paris Air Show 2025. The company confirmed letters of intent for more than 100 of its future ERA hybrid electric 19-seat regional aircraft from more operators. These bring its total order book to over 650. Orders include 20 firm plus 20 options from Korean aircraft lesser Solyu, and an additional 20 firm plus 20 options from Marathon Airlines, a Greek charter operator and ACMI provider that may use them on regional routes connecting islands in the Aegean Sea. That's it for today's Next Gen Minute. Let's get back to the rest of the news. H-55's B-23 Energic logs 50 flights at Palo Alto. Swiss electric aircraft developer H-55 completed over 50 demo flights in the Palo Alto stop of its Across America tour. The Bristol B-23 Energic aircraft demonstrated the reliability of its electric propulsion system, and the company said total purchase commitments garnered during the tour now account for the first two years of production. During the stop at Palo Alto Airport, H-55 said the B-23 demonstrated negligible energy cost and minimal maintenance that significantly reduced overall operating expenses for operators of training facilities. In addition, pilots consistently said the aircraft displayed smooth, vibration-free flight characteristics, which is very desirable in a training environment and is attributable to the electric propulsion system. H-55 said this hand-first validation very quickly converted casual conversations on the ramp into signed orders, indicating the readiness of the U.S. market for electric flight training. Andre Borschberg, executive chairman and co-founder of H-55, said, quote, Flying solar impulse around the world proved that electric propulsion could conquer the skies. The B-23 Energic proves it can conquer the business case. We are now at an important turning point in our growth as we start to generate product revenue on top of engineering revenue, end quote. After these messages, Ukraine digs Iranian tech out of Russian assault debris. Welcome back. Ukraine digs Iranian tech out of Russian assault debris. Searching through the debris of an assault on Ukraine led drone hunters to a startling discovery. Russia may be using sophisticated Iranian tech in its attacks. The recent strikes on Iranian infrastructure, however, may hinder the country from selling weapons to Russia. The recently downed drone, reportedly different in appearance and construction from standard Russian designs, featured white external panels and component labels consistent with Iranian manufacturing standards. According to a Ukrainian electronics expert, the drone included an artificial intelligence computing platform, high-end camera equipment, a radio control link, and an eight-antenna anti-jammer. These all indicate sophisticated upgrades from earlier models. Russia has relied heavily on Shahed series drones throughout its war in Ukraine, having signed a $1.7 billion drone manufacturing deal with Iran in 2022. What began as shipments of disassembled drones for reassembly has evolved into full-scale domestic production at the Alabuga plant in Tatarstan. Designs have since been adapted for Russian use, bringing in AI, onboard cameras, and even thermobaric warheads to make a pretty capable weapon. The latest drone discovery, though, appears to be a significant leap in capability. Its remote operable design allows in-flight target changes from within Russian territory. This is a sharp contrast to earlier versions, which followed pre-programmed paths and sometimes wandered until shot down. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.